Here's another example of a linear transformation that we looked at. This one we did look at in class, but it's it's a, a little more subtle one, and it's it's very going to be very important to us. One one zero one is the matrix, and so uh, I decided to go ahead and do a little bit more than just the basic unit square because that's not quite enough to get a really great idea of what's going on here. So oh, let's see, let's connect these dots here. Um, so here's a little house. It's based on the unit square, and then we have double height and a little roof, a little pitched roof. And let's look at what, what some of these points go to. Of course, the origin goes to the origin, as with any of matrix times vector transformation. And the, um, the first column is just 1, 0. So 1, 0 goes to itself. And so this uh, point is not changed. And in fact, anything on the x-axis, being a scalar multiple of that, is not going to change. And so that's interesting. So you might think not, not, not much is going on. But the y-axis, the j, 0, 1, the second basis vector, that goes to 1, 1. Remember, you can read that off the second column of the matrix. And so that is being slanted over to here. So z is that guy, that's being slanted over. The sum of 1, 0, and 0, 1, of course, goes to the sum of the outputs. And that means that this rectangle goes to a parallelogram, as with all matrix times vector transformations. Parallelograms are going to go to parallelograms. And so net, but now, the, as opposed to like a reflection or rotation, the square has definitely been slanted over to become a parallelogram. This is called a shear, okay? And so this is, it's very important. This is known as a shear transformation. Shearing is when like layers of a material move sort of parallel to each other, and the different layers can move a different amount. And so that when you travel in, the, in this direction going up, the movement is in a different direction. So any, it's, and a shear is any time when, when you compare two things that are in one direction from each other, they're misaligned, they're moved relative to each other, but in another direction, as opposed to expanding along a certain direction. So when you move in one direction and you see a move like your sample point in one direction and you see actual motion going in the other direction, it's going to be a shear. So let's look at what happens with some other points. 0, 2, and 1, 2. You can check that those go to 2, 2, and 3, 2. That's the uh, the second story, the, the roof of the, the ceiling of the second story. That gets shifted even more. So this line didn't get moved. This line get mo got moved some some uh, some amount, one unit to the right. And this line's getting moved double that because it's twice as far away from the this kind of baseline. And then R, I put on a little roof. That's interesting because it actually it was right in the middle of Q and P, and this was a nice little 45, 45, 90 triangle. We can see that that's getting uh, sheared over into um, a different shape. It's still a right triangle, but with the, the right triangle happens to be in the or the right angle happens to be at a different vertex, and so that's just getting kind of bent out of shape. And R shows up right above P because it's moving more than any of the other points. So it's what happens if you take this picture and you smoosh it over, but you smoosh it more as you go up, and that's that's a classic example of a shear transformation. One question I'd like to ask you is. If you compare the area, say, of this rectangle, or this square, or the rectangle, or the whole house, to the area of the new house, what's the relationship of those two areas? That's something very interesting to think about. Definitely something weird has been done here, but what has been done to the area? And then another example, very similar to that. So this was where the 1 was up here above the diagonal. Now, if you just flip it to below the diagonal, what's that going to do? I'm just going to give you some hints. I'm not going to draw the whole picture. If we just take our standard two standard basis vectors, let me just copy this and paste it and uh, kind of make it into one zero. Okay, what's that going to do? Well, that's going to be, now that's going to be one one. Now the x-axis is the thing that's getting moved into a diagonal. And the y-axis, j, the second basis vector, that's the one that's unchanged. So this is going to be slanted. This is going to be unchanged. And I'd like to you to know, think about what would this house turn into if the y-axis is now not changing, but x is being lifted up to where y is, and so x is going to be lifted up like here. So what kind of shear transformation does that look like? It's an interesting thing to think about, but that's where I'll stop.